Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. And there's a, a split, mind-body split right there. The church spires talk, uh, point to the sky and, you know, as if, you know, God is present away from the earth rather than here on the earth with us. Not looking over us like a judging father, but with us, part of us, we're part of God. We know everything's energy. So the point of this, though, is the more we accept our humanity, the more we'll see that the way we're handling pregnancy and early childhood, maybe, is uh, contributing to alienation and our social and economic troubles. Like um, Gandhi said that many social problems would just disappear if we took better care of the of child of the children's innocence. So I just want to talk about brain development. You know, during the time of pregnancy, if the mum is tense and stressed which I feel like many of our mums are. This promotes the development of the man's, humankind's earliest brain, the reptilian brain, which is a brain that is defensive, basically. It um, sees things in black and white and gets tunnel vision. It's just not, it's the earliest brain. <laughs> And, you know, it makes sense that if, the, you know, if the mums are tense and stressed, you know, it might be a difficult time in human development. And so, you know, maybe the, the point is then to have children who are, are carrying a defensiveness and they'll be better soldiers, maybe. You know, maybe it's like that. Anyway. So in the East, the Eastern sages, um, suggests that mums have um, as little responsibility as possible, that other family members shoulder their responsibilities and that they have time to just be and dream and feel into the baby that's coming and sort of begin to greet this person who's arriving soon. And it's considered a, a holy task. And maybe we could do that more. We could give mums a little more space and care. The other thing is that humankind's latest brain is the prefrontal lobe, or the nickname is angel lobes, because it's the seat of the abstract. This is the seat of the noble person who is a person capable of noble actions and sacrificing for, you know, personal goals for the greater gain of the community. You know, not that it always has to go that way. Sometimes we can serve the community by just not sacrificing at all. But so the prefrontal lobes also are the the part that are capable of imagining an abstract God or soul or the abstract unconditional love and serving that. Really, that's what I did. I just served the abstract goal and said, I want to embody it. Show me how to embody it. Took me some years, but anyway. Um, so children, I mean, the most auspicious time for the development of the prefrontal lobe, or the most important time, is zero to six. It starts beginning after birth. And what really helps is a stable, loving environment with play and stimulation, but also routine. But a very stable thing. And then, you know, by six, um, the child is uh, then 
can function more independently. Like in, you know, in ancient Hawaii, it was actually considered the six, then the parent let go of the hand, meaning that you take a great deal of care from zero to six, and then you just let the child become themselves more. So, you know, actually, um, we're, we're not really taking care of this time with little kids. We don't understand the importance of it or, um, you know, how much, uh, like how beneficent a character can be who really gets what they need at that time. So, I mean, if we want a population that's noble and can serve abstracts, you know, that can understand, you know, like that compassionate love is a good thing, that justice is a good thing, and be maybe a little less self-centered than is common. You know, this might these might be wise. And there, you know, as we respect our humanity more, as we as we take better care, we're we're souls, but we're also human. And it's how we we the choices we make, how we set up our human experience that really matters. And if we took better care of the kids, I just know things would be better. Yeah, and part of it is, you know, I had a little brother who was born when I was seven and I just fell in love with this kid and he was just, had the best childhood, zero to six. He just had unlimited love and care and stimulation and everything. And, you know, when he reached adulthood, he was carrying very little fear. See, what happens is, what happens to a zero to six like the extent of the trauma or the amount that or f the fear that happens that we experience fear then that it rises up so when we reach adulthood and we start off you know setting off on our own adulthood journey the amount of fear we're carrying is connected to what happened to us zero to six so imagine you know, being able to go into adulthood with the experience of very little fear. My experience was I was so looking forward to growing up and everything. And then, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, all this heaviness came on and this whole level of care and concern. I was like, where did this come from? Well, it came from my early childhood and what happened to me. And I actually had a difficult time and it's, you know, it took uh, many years to th see through that fear and trauma. And that's why I really know what I'm saying is it really matters what happens to a zero to six because I really experienced the cost of what happened to me. You know, um, as I did this transformational work, I felt deeply what I felt like as a child and what it had done to me. And it's all healable. That's the important thing. To know that it's all healable. So it doesn't matter what happens, you can transcend it. And the, you know, my concern with this video is I don't want to send mums into guilt because I didn't know this when I had my children. I didn't know that maybe it mattered how my thoughts were during pregnancy or, you know, with the early years. So that we need to take extra care of our kids. I didn't know this. So I have to forgive myself. You know, and life happened. So forgive us. Forgive. We have to forgive ourselves. We don't know. And in our culture, we this is not mainstream knowledge. So how could we know? Anyway, I hope this helps. Bless your hearts.